that all of you are very excited, it is imperative on our part to discuss first the course description. So this course provides an overview of the major disciplines of forensic chemistry and toxicology with examples to demonstrate their specific contributions in terms of the identification, collection, preservation, investigation, presentation, as well as the biological and chemical analysis of physical evidence such as the hair, such as the dangerous drugs, whether it's a methamphetamine hydrochloride, okay? What are other examples? Um, whether it's a urine, whether it's a soil, okay? Those are examples of physical evidence which will be subjected for biological or chemical analysis or examination for effective dispensation of justice. So it is very evident that this course or professional subject, forensic chemistry and toxicology, will not only cover theories, but laboratory activities as well. So do not worry because we will in despite the new normal, we will still manage to have a laboratory activity which will be done virtually. So next we'll have the course outline. So what is the content of this subject? First, basic concepts of forensic chemistry and toxicology. Next, history of forensic chemistry and toxicology. Third, principles of forensic chemistry and toxicology. Another, significance and value of forensic science in criminal investigation. Then, crime scene protocol to on forensic chemistry related evidence. Then, next we do have the tests on biological evidence, such as as what I mentioned earlier, the blood, the blood stain, the semen, the hair, the fibers the saliva, the urine, and even including the feces. Another, test on physical evidence such as the gunpowder, the residue, the explosive, the tool marks, the dust, the dirt, the serial number, and even the restoration of the serial number. Next is that casting, then glass fracture analysis, your ink and your paper analysis, your drug analysis, and we'll also have the case reporting. And lastly, part of the course outline is the legal aspect of forensic chemistry and presentation in court as evidence. All right? So those are the um, course outline for this subject. But do not worry because the, the contents that I have just read will not cover the prelim period but it will cover the whole second semester all right so next we'll have our course requirement first you will need to submit an activity folder okay just for in case that you will not be able to submit it online next and before i may forget with regards to just for in case that you will submit a hard copy for your activity Please make sure to write in the folder your name, your subject, your section. All right? And next is we'll have a video conference or in simpler term, we'll have a virtual meeting which we, we've already utilized, uh, we've only done it on the first semester So and during summertime. So still we'll have a scheduled video conference or virtual meeting. Next is we'll have a recorded video presentation. So this is already an example of a recorded video presentation. And you as well will be required to submit a recorded video presentation, just like we did in the first semester. And last requirement for this subject is, of course, your major exam. Remember that this, it is very imperative on your part to comply with all the requirements, all of this course requirement. Why? 
because in our grading system, 60% will include your activity, your recorded required recorded video presentation, your assignment. So all of that, all of those that I have mentioned is under CS, which is again 60% of your grade. And another, your major exam, your prelim exam, your midterm, and your final examination is equivalent to 40%, which is a total of 100%. So again, it is very imperative on your part to comply with all those activities and course requirements that I have mentioned. Now let us discuss formally what is forensic chemistry. So our forensic chemistry guys deals with the application of chemical principles in the solution of problems that arise in connection with the administration of justice. As what I have mentioned earlier that in this subject Okay, in this criminalistic subject, it will not only cover theories but also laboratory examination. That is why your forensic chemistry includes the application of all chemical principles. So what are the common um, examination that is conducted by a forensic expert, like a forensic chemist? So they do conduct examination on blood, examination on semen, examination on urine to check if there is a presence of, of, of dangerous drugs or the use of blood, the use of, yeah, the use of blood to establish the, the true perpetrator of the crime, okay? Then another is Forensic chemistry is the use of chemistry to support litigation in civil and criminal cases. Therefore, all scientific examination, all um, findings of the examination conducted by the forensic chemist, by the expert, is not only useful, useful in criminal actions, in criminal cases like rape, like murder, like on the dangerous drugs, but also in civil cases as well. That is why it was mentioned in your course outline, one of its content is examination of ink, examination and paper. That is why question document examination is one of the invaded um, sciences or criminalistics by the forensic chemistry and toxicology. Next, this science has advantage over extracted confessions. Remember, guys, that um, confessions has two types. It could be extrajudicial confession and it can be a judicial confession. Question, what's the difference between the two? First, when you say extrajudicial confession, it is a type of confession that is given no, that is given by the suspect, by the perpetrator that is outside the court. It could be in the crime scene during the conduct of arrest or it can be in the police station during investigation. And another type of confession is judicial confession. So this is the total opposite of extra. So when you say judicial confession, meaning to say this is a type of confession that is given by the accused during court trial, okay, or inside the court. Then another, this forensic science is also, has an advantage also over the witnesses and other circumstantial evidence. Another, it is regarded as the highest form of incontestable and conclusive piece of evidence with at most legal significance. Remember that forensic science is an essential no, element in criminal investigation in the administration of justice because the result or the findings of the forensic expert 
will help exonerate those suspects that were wrongfully accused. And aside from that, the result of the findings, scientific uh, examination conducted by the expert will also, of course, um, allow the victim, allow the party, the family of the offended party to, to acquire justice. Another is the value of the findings of a chemist in convicting guilty as well as in clearing the innocent is widely recognized. So the forensic chemist is often called to render testimony in court. Yes, that is correct. The job of the forensic chemist, their function does not rest, does not cease in conducting examination only, but it continues by providing testimony in the court. Remember that the moment that a forensic chemist is asked to testify, then he or she is regarded as a as an expert witness. And whatever she says in court are considered or is considered as an expert testimony. Alright? So now let us discuss what are the these branches of of forensic sciences or areas that has been invaded by forensic chemistry and toxicology. So first is of course dangerous drugs. That is why I have mentioned earlier that a chemist also conducts a blood examination and urine examination in order to determine the presence of drugs in the body of an individual another it's not only to determine if there if the, that individual has consumed a dangerous drug but also to determine the purity no the purity and the type of dangerous drug that has been transported and 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 delivered into the crime laboratory to 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 establish its identity as to the type of dangerous drugs whether it's an example of a stimulant, a depressant, or a hallucinogen. Another is arson investigation. When you say arson investigation, I know, I understand. Your what is your in your mind is already the 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 powers and functions and responsibility of the of the fire officer. But remember, this is still part. of in the study of forensic chemistry and toxicology so in this area we'll not focus on on extinguishing fire and suppressing fire but rather in the area of forensic chemistry and toxicology um, it focuses more on um, establishing the, the, the possible origin of fire and to check if there is an angle of arson next Question document examination. Yes, that is why I have mentioned earlier that the result of the examination, the findings of the forensic expert is very useful in both civil and criminal cases. So, of course, again, it includes examination of paper, examination of ink. So, what are the common questions? Uh, pieces of document that are normally being questioned like for example check another example is land title mother title so uh, another is mga suicide notes so these are some of the common pieces of evidence that has been subjected for examination and for and, and also to to uh, to determine whether the signature that is being affixed on that question document is written by one person or written by another person. Another is serology, of course, examination of blood. So to determine the blood type, to determine who is the owner of the blood. Yes. Another, fingerprint identification. Next, firearms and explosive examination. That is why part of your course content 
is that um, examination of physical evidence like gunpowder residue. Yes. Another is soil analysis. Forensic toxicology. So when you say forensic, so remember guys that forensic chemistry and forensic toxicology are not synonymous. They are different because your toxicology focus more on toxic. Another is macro itching. So with that, I will give you your first assignment. So your assignment will be available in our Google Classroom. So you may submit online or you may submit a hard copy of your answer. So allow me to read your first assignment. Are extra judicial confessions admissible as evidence in court? Yes or no? Support your answer. All right, so that's the end of our first um, discussion, video, this uh, recorded video presentation. So see you next meeting. Bye, guys.